Thanks, Tang. Um, so my name is Amy Schmidt. I'm at the University of Nebraska Lincoln. And um, the tool I'm going to talk about today is called the Nebraska Ag Site Planner. And um, I want to emphasize that this is a Nebraska tool. So um, it's not available nationwide. I, I don't know that it will become available that way. But for now, um, I want to kind of explain what, what this tool does and uh, what value it has here in Nebraska. Um, so the kind of the reason for putting this tool together, um, several years back, we started to see uh, this opportunity for the livestock industry in the state to expand quite a bit. And um, one of the um, major drivers of that was a, a new poultry processing facility in the state um, to supply um, chickens to uh, Costco stores. And so as we were looking at that um, that process for new, a lot of new uh, farmers to come on board who maybe had not produced livestock or poultry before, we kind of identified three um, specific needs. So one was an ability to evaluate um, potential production sites um, to look at the suitability of um, risks associated with uh, environmental issues, um, proximity to towns or neighbors, um, odor issues, things like that. The second was just um, a really straightforward tool to help someone um, decide or understand whether or not there are regulatory requirements for a particular operation that they're considering. Um, this was something I got called about a lot <laughs> before this tool was, uh, was launched where people want to know, you know, if I'm expanding to this number of animals, will I require a permit? Mostly wanting to kind of find out where's that breaking point between becoming a CAFO and needing a permit versus increasing my animal numbers, but not quite um, to that CAFO status. So, and then the third was um, a way to support engagement among the producers and their community, whether they're working with their um, policymakers, their zoning committee, or just the neighbors in their community as they plan and operate um, an animal feeding operation. So this um, Nebraska Ag Site Planner was developed uh, from a grant provided by the Nebraska Environmental Trust. And it's designed, um, as it says here, to provide research-based information, tools, and resources to support responsible livestock production and expansion. There's three main tools um, in the initial, uh, initial development of this site and um, the contents of it. The first is called the risk management tool. This is designed to identify potential environmental and social risks associated with a site um, based on that site's specific geographic location. And I'll show you how that works here in a minute. But the second is the regulatory guidance tool. And as I said, um, this one is intended to um, help a user understand if there are regulatory requirements associated with a particular operation um, of a certain size and um, by county location. And then the third section is the critical questions. And these are the um, kind of thought provoking questions for um, both for the producer and for community members or policymakers to talk through, um, you know, how are you going to protect neighbors? Um, how are you going to control odor? Um, how do you ensure um, water quality will be maintained? So those are um, those are more just thought provoking questions to um, help farmers start those conversations in their neighborhood. So I'm just gonna briefly show you the three tools. Um, the first is the risk management tool. And the way this one works is there's a, a Google Maps interface and you actually zoom in, find your um, parcel of land that you're interested in assessing and then draw a boundary around that. Once you have that boundary um, you know, you can you can start over, cancel, and, and redraw it if it doesn't come out right. Uh, once you have it how you like it, then clicking on U shape will start generating um, the report. And I'm just showing a few highlights of that report here, but um, we provide site information, um, and then uh, each section has these um, pop-ups to the side if they if they're relevant. So. 
for some of the topics, you know, uh, we want them, people might ask, well, why do I even really care about this? So this is cut off. I realize I'm just kind of showing you what these look like in the system, but we usually have a, why is this important um, box? And then additional resources related to that particular section of the report. So the other um, parts of the report that are returned is the legal land description for that um, parcel, the local regulations and ordinances. So Nebraska is a state that has um, a lot of planning and zoning or, or um, ordinances in place for livestock operations in certain counties. A proximity to sensitive areas like uh, public parks and schools, other permitted livestock operations, Hydraulic information, so registered wells, um, wetlands, impaired water bodies, all of these um, considerations for deciding on setback distances. And then um, climate data, so seasonal wind roses and precipitation primarily. And again, these um, come back to some of the basics of just um, locating that site to minimize odor risk to neighbors and understanding um, potential storage issues with open manure storage as if, um, if those are going to be built and kind of understanding the precipitation patterns there. So the regulatory guidance tool is, um, it starts out with a map of the state of Nebraska and moving the cursor around on that map will, will highlight each county as you go over it. So you can select the county of interest and then it will step you through a set of questions asking what species of livestock you plan to raise, um, how many animals uh, are in your operation. So this is worth noting here, the person could enter existing livestock um, numbers on their site and then return and add new livestock to that same system to generate the report. Um, so anyway, they step through those questions and then that uh, tool returns um, some guidance on what type of, of animal feeding operation this is, whether it's an AFO, a small or medium AFO, or a large CAFO. It also returns some information about the county that was selected. So we have a program in Nebraska called Livestock Friendly County Designation. And so if that county is, is um, designated as livestock friendly, you will see that here. And then even if it's livestock friendly, there can still be additional uh, regulatory requirements there. And so we provide um, contact information for county administrators um, in that particular county. And then finally, at the bottom of the page, um, we have information that sort of steps a person through what they would do to pursue um, a permit for a large CAFO or if or if they uh, describe a smaller operation, what, what steps they would go through to request an inspection. Um, and then links to those actual permits um, are provided throughout that um, text at the bottom of the page there. The critical questions um, section of the tool has three um, primary subject areas. The first is focused on evaluating potential production sites. So these are things like um, considering distance to um, surface water bodies, if there's impaired water bodies, um, distance to neighbors, travel patterns you might use to avoid um, passing by neighbors' houses with manure or with um, loaded livestock trailers, how you intend to uh, protect your animals, so biosecurity concerns, um, and on down to local infrastructure, things like um, how you might support um, the maintenance of roads, gravel roads in that area, what, what pathways you might want to take um, based on the maintenance level of different roads in that area. The second is about starting, um, starting an operation. So once you've evaluated and you know where you want to build that operation, um, then we get into how do you start communicating with um, all of the different individuals or organizations that um, might have a say in that um, system. So communicating with your county, um, neighbors, community, uh, regulatory agency here, and um, so on. And then staying engaged with the community. We all know that there's a lot of value in being um, 
a positive member of the community and contributing to the community to um, encourage more acceptance of a livestock operation. So we talked a little bit about you know the appearance of your facility, things you can do to enhance that facility appearance, um, ways you can enhance neighbor relations, and so on. So after those first three tools were um, developed and launched, we then went back and started adding um, additional resources. So we've um, we've got the Nebraska Odor Footprint tool that was developed by my colleague, uh, Dr. Rick Stoll, several years ago. And that's always been in an Excel uh, spreadsheet type format that's a little bit difficult to use and to understand. So typically our, our um, consultants will run that, not, not usually a producer that's um, running through that tool. And so we've converted it to an on-demand um, online tool at the, in this particular um, Ag Site Planner um, platform. And again, a lot of the value in putting it in this sort of format is giving a very visual depiction of the results, what they mean. Um, so we have pop-ups again that will kind of explain what, what does this odor annoyance-free frequency mean, um, the different lines on the, on the map. So just trying to make it a bit more um, understandable to anyone that might want to use the tool. So there's some additional resources available um, on the site, anything from our land application training events and online training module to um, information about the Livestock Friendly County program in the state. And then the big question is how, um, how has this been used and what have, we, uh, what have we learned or what have we accomplished with the site? So as far as the regulatory guidance tool, this is kind of, to me, one of the most interesting um, bits of data. So um, as far as the livestock species that we, um, the frequency of different livestock species being um, uh, searched on that regulatory guidance tool, about 60% of people going through that system are um, entering beef cattle as their production system. About 26% are swine and about 11% are poultry. Um, if we look specifically at the cattle operations, um, we're looking pretty, pretty even between the breeding stock, replacement and finishing animals. Um, with the swine systems, we see a lot of wean finish operations being um, evaluated here, which makes sense because we do have several integrators in the state that contract with growers to um, grow and finish their animals. And then with um, poultry, mainly broiler operations is what we're looking at um, here in, in Nebraska. And then um, this is the breakdown on the right of the size of operation that is um, evaluated in this regulatory guidance tool. This is just a map kind of a user demographics. Um, obviously there's some um, quite a bit more density of user data in the um, eastern part of the state, which is the more populated part of the state. And we have seen some operations um, near Lincoln and Omaha or kind of on the outskirts. And so there's quite a bit of usage of the tools in those um, areas as well. And I would imagine those are primarily um, community members and regulators as opposed to producers. So um, this is just briefly age demographics, um, which is just another measure that we get um, in our Google Analytics. So younger audiences are the ones running the tool, doesn't necessarily the, mean they're the ones um, pursuing um, livestock production. So with that, I'll wrap up um, and turn things over to Andrea, and we'll take some questions at the end of the webinar. So thank you. Thank you.